Hello everybody and welcome to the second of two videos on this, the Asahi Pentax Model S. In the first video we looked at the camera to talk about what everything is. In this video we're going to talk about what everything does. First thing we're going to do is mount and unmount the lenses. Now those of you who are eagle-eyed and have seen my Asahi Pentax video where I made the bold claim that I don't own a preset lens, apparently I do. This is a preset M42 lens that would have been included with the Asahi Pentax S or with the um, original Asahi Pentax, one or the other. Probably the S, um, given the specs on this is a 55 millimeter f2.2. At any rate, to, mount, to unmount the lens, it's M42. You simply unscrew it counter or anti-clockwise, and then to mount it, you just screw it back in clockwise. And in a little bit, we will talk about how to use a preset lens. And uh, I'll, I'll show you how they work. Next thing we're going to talk about is loading film. So to load the film, you simply open the film back, pop the film rewind post up, grab your cassette, drop it in and pull out a leader, put it into the take-up spool. And I am three for three tonight getting these to load the first time. That's an unheard of number for me. Now you close the film back, set your film memo dial to whatever type of film you're using. It doesn't do anything for the camera, but it reminds you of what you have. Now on the top here, we have an arrow that will remind you of which way to turn this. And you want to turn this to a couple of notches before zero. So I guess we're going to go the entire way around here. There we go. Now we're going to advance this three times. And that should put us at one. No, that puts us at negative one. Oh boy, I'll bet you that's not working correctly. Yeah, looks like my frame advance isn't working on this camera. Well, the rest of it works. It's not the end of the world. At any rate, the frame advance will start counting up. Now, as you take your pictures, you're going through your, your film. There we go, just like that. When you get to the end of the roll, it's time to rewind. And to rewind, you hold the film rewind button, and then you just start rewinding. Now remember, film is one and done, and so there are two ways to, to expose it, in a controlled manner with an accurate shutter speed and aperture, or in an uncontrolled manner like this. So I'm doing this because I want to show you how the film goes through your camera. When you take a picture, the film's pulled off of the spool and advanced through the camera body, just like that. When you rewind, now this film tension sprocket keeps the film from being pulled back in by the spring memory built up by its shape in the cassette. But when you rewind it, now this spins freely and you can rewind the film. Just like that. So again, remembering that uh, you keep the film back closed from the time you have finished advancing your leader at the very beginning, those three frames, until you finish rewinding your cassette. There we go. And, and, nope, that's not how that works. There we go. You take your cassette out, and then you either put in another one, or if you're done for the day, you trigger your, trigger your shutter and close the camera. Now, the reason that you trigger your shutter is that these are mechanical shutters, and they're controlled by springs. So when you advance your film and arm your shutter, you're putting tension on springs. And when you release the shutter, those springs fire and activate the shutter mechanism. So if you store it for days or weeks or months or years on end with the shutter springs under tension, they'll start to develop a memory. And instead of closing quickly, they'll close more slowly and it'll throw off your shutter timing, your shutter speeds, things like that. And it'll require a professional repair to correct. So you um, don't want to do that. Next thing we're going to talk about is preset lenses on this camera, how they work and what they are. Okay, so this is a preset lens up close. 
What I'm going to do is shine a light in there so you can see the aperture blades. They are oily. Oops. Those aperture blades are oily, but you know what? It does not matter with preset lenses. So you can see here I'm adjusting the aperture open and close. And I won't lie, that's a nice aperture. It's basically circular through all of the important um, aperture settings. There we go. Now, if we take a look at the top of the lens right here, you can see that there's this ring that's got click stops. I don't know if you can hear it clicking. And then this ring here that is smooth. This first ring is what you set, it's your governor. So it's not going to allow the aperture to close beyond a certain point. So if I set this to f5.6, I can only close the aperture to f5.6. There, you can see it a little bit better there. So I've set the governor to f5.6. If I set the governor now to f2.8, I can only stop down to f2.8. So when you use a preset lens, and this is true of all preset lenses, not just the M42 ones for the old Pentax bodies, what you do is you decide on your settings. Your, you get your meter reading or whatever, and you set your aperture ring, your aperture governor to the correct setting. You open up all the way to do your focusing, and then you stop down. Oops before taking your picture. And that's how that's just how preset lenses work. We'll see it a little bit more at the end of this video, uh, briefly when I talk about how to take a picture. But I wanted to specifically show you the mechanism because preset lenses are a lot different than any other sort of modern camera lens. Okay, let's talk about how to do flash photography with the, it's, with the Pentax S. First thing you wanna do, is make sure that you set your shutter speed dial on the fast speed dial to X. That is your flash sync speed, your fastest flash sync speed. And that's going to make sure that you get the proper flash sync. If you try to use a shutter speed faster than that, it won't work with modern flashes. Now the reason for that is that flashes don't work by the curtains physically moving faster, but by the amount of time between the opening and closing curtain following each other. The curtains will always move at the same speed. 1 50th of a second is the fastest shutter speed on this camera at which the curtain is opened, or the, the entire film plane rather, is open to light at the exact same time. If you set this to 1 500th, the first curtain will open and then the second one will follow behind. So there will never be a time at 1 500th of a second when the entire film plane is open to light at the same time. And with modern flashes, the flash is triggered, the light bounces off the subject and bounces back in what is effectively an instant at the correct time when the shutter curtains are opened. So if you did want to use a flash, there's no hot shoe, there's no cold shoe, there's no way to attach one. So you have to plug your flash into the X port PC port right here you'd want to use what's called a flash bar. It's a little piece of metal that connects to the tripod bushing here, goes out to the side, has another tripod screw over here, and then you plug in your, your camera, your flash rather, like a little hot shoe adapter to that, and then that hot shoe adapter typically has a cable to the X port, or the flash does something then cables over to the X port. So realistically, if you're going to be using one of these, you're probably not going to be using a flash uh, unless you want to take pictures of people with a rare camera at an indoor event or something. But um, so that's how you would need to use it with a, a flash bar, a flash unit, and then a, a cable to the X socket, making sure you're at X sync with your flash uh, or slower. Any, any shutter speed slower than X will also work. And to access those slower shutter speeds, all you need to do is flip over to this dial, although if you want to use 1 30th, there you go. And then anything slower than 1 30th, this shutter speed dial takes precedence over the fast shutter speed dial. So you can also do things like slow speed sync and, and other nifty flash tricks like that if you're so inclined. 
So the last thing we're going to do here, that, well, the last two things we're going to do are talk about how to take a picture with this camera and how to do a double exposure with this camera. Now, uh, the process for taking a picture is a little bit uh, wonky because we use this fancy preset lens. There we go. So you're going to stand behind your, your Asahi Pentax S, make sure that you're advanced so you're ready to take a picture. Now if you have a light meter, either in your cell phone or handheld, you take a meter reading, or if you're outside in full sun, you can use the Sunny 16 rule, or if you're like me, just look at a scene and be like, yeah, sure, these settings sound great, let's do that. Um, then what you need to do is then select your shutter speed and your aperture. So let's say you're going to be at 1 500th at f4. That works. If you're using a preset lens, like a preset lens that came with this, then all you have to do is set the, the governor. Then you're going to focus with your lens wide open, stop down, take your picture in advance. And that's how you take a picture. If you are using a later Takumar lens that has the um, automatic or um, the, the pin activated shutter, you would need to flip that Takumar lens into um, manual mode in order for it to work and then the lens would just stop down all the time. This camera was designed for the preset lenses which had a fairly short production lifetime with, with Pentax. So that's, that's a, a single exposure. Double exposures are a little bit more complicated. If you wanted to do one, there's a little bit of science to understand first. And that is that if you are taking a picture at 1 1 25th of a second at f5.6, then, and that is a proper exposure, let's say, if you were to take two frames with that same setting in the same space, you would get a very dark, very thick is the term, negative, which digitizes poorly with low contrast and lots of digital artifacts and prints in the dark room very poorly with low contrast and long print times. So you need to cut the amount of light in half for a double exposure so that you can get a single properly exposed frame. So the first thing to do is compensate for your reading. You can do that either on the shutter or in the aperture. With the aperture, you would just set it down from f5.6, let's say, to f8. If you're at f4, you would go to f5.6 or f11 to f16. With your shutter speed, you would go from 1 1 25th to 1 2 50th, 1 60th to 1 1 25th, for instance. These are fractions, so the higher number means shorter time, and you basically just have to go up one spot to cut the amount of time in half. So I'm going to leave it at 1 2 50th, and we're going to stick with f5.6 for our aperture, take our first exposure. Now we have to advance, rearm the shutter without advancing the film. To do that, we hold the film rewind button down, hold the film rewind knob, and advance. And that keeps the film from moving while the advance lever rearms the shutter. And we do it again. Now we advance the film. But we're not done. So after you take your double exposure, it takes a moment for the gears to re-engage and advance the film. So instead of moving the whole way, your double exposure frame will only move part way. So if you take another exposure, you're going to have some amount of your double exposure overlapping your next frame and you'll probably ruin both of them. So you put a cap on your lens and setting it down to your smallest aperture works really well. In this case, f22. And then you take a dead frame in advance and that dead frame guarantees that your next frame after the double exposure will not overlap the double exposure and cause problems with both of the images. And that is it. That is the Asahi Pentax S, the rarest of the um, attainable Asahi Pentax cameras. So if this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track and that I'm producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have questions or comments, please leave those below. I'm more than, I check my comments every couple of days and uh, respond as quickly as possible. If you have suggestions or um, ideas for future videos, please let me know. And if I have the equipment and technical know-how, I'm happy to make those. And one last thing, 
Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next camera video manual series.